Welcome to Animal Zone, where we will share what everyone from psychologists to cardiologists agree on, that having a pet can change and even save your life. Whether it be a cat, a dog, a bird, or even a tortoise, having a pet in your life may be one of the most rewarding things you can do for yourself and for the pet. Today's guests include Jeffney Telson, author of the new book, Cat Tales, and the founder of Rescue Cats, an organization involved in the care and adoption of stray cats and kittens. Then we'll meet the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, and she'll be talking to my pit bull, Mikey. Later on, we'll be with veterinarian, Dr. Annie O'Donnell, who has some important tips for your health of your pet. And also, we'll be talking with Tamar Geller. She's the New York Times bestseller on several books about dogs and Oprah's personal dog trainer. So stay tuned, there's lots to see here on Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Oh. Sweetheart, what about those puppies? Oh. Honey puppies. Oh. Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. We're here today with Jeffney Telson, who's the author of a book called Cat Tales. And Jeffney, you know, they say that people are the ones who only tell stories. But in your book, you say that you've learned a lot of lessons from cats and kittens. I have. In fact, um, I have learned about life and been able to face a lot of challenges uh, by learning from the cats and kittens. I have a friend who encouraged me for several years to write a book. She read some of my articles in the newsletter. And I finally took her up on the challenge. It took me four years and one of the most difficult things I have ever done. But it is not a book just about the animals and cats. It's a book about life. It's a book about loss, patience, learning, acceptance, respecting the life cycle. All those things I have learned from the cats and, and doing rescue cats for the last 21 years. There's, there's a lot of... Um, there's some sadness in the book, there's talk about loss and how to deal with it, but there's a lot of funny humor, pilling a cat, one that broke in, so I think that it will reach across a lot of audiences. When you bring a cat into a home, how do you bring that cat into a relationship with other people and other animals? Is it something that happens naturally or does it take some kind of technique? Sometimes it takes a technique. If you have other animals, you need to introduce them slowly. Uh, and we do give out techniques of doing that. Uh, and others just settle in right away. One of the beauties of the cats that have been adopted from here is how they change people's lives. I had a girl that came in several years ago, 28 years old, wearing the little head scarf, no hair underneath, and she was suffering from breast cancer. She adopted two kittens. A year later, I got a card from her and a picture. Her hair was about this long, the cats were big and they were on each side, and she said, I credit these two with being part of my healing. I've had several women who have lost their husbands and they have come in and they no longer have to go to a, a lonely home. So those kinds of kitties kind of have a mission and something that they're supposed to do besides just being a cat. They're shy cats and they're very friendly cats. Yes. How do you get a shy cat to become a little more friendly? Well, that is that is not always possible. Um, I think that one of the things that I have learned is to honor who each 
cat is and what their personality is. A very friendly cat is probably one that's had a lot of social interaction, perhaps been bottle fed. Those that are more shy, I see that they usually come from a, a mom that's been out on her own, the stress of being outside hun hunting, looking for food, water, shelter. The babies inside feel that stress and so when they pop out, that's kind of ingrained in their personality. And then with feral kittens, they need to be very, very young before we can even start to socialize them. If they are over eight weeks old, the process is more difficult. If they're over 12 weeks, it's almost impossible. Mm. Are there different types of breeds that, or the ancestry of breeds that have different kinds of personalities? Like are Abyssinians the same as Persians, as the same as Tabbies? I know that Abyssinians are very friendly, uh, are very uh, attractive the, the, the human bond. Um, we have some people that think orange tabbies are the best cats in the world and that they have the best personalities. I would beg to differ because I have a thing about black cats. I think I would put all of that aside. Different breeds probably are bred for specific personalities and of course for looks. But when you do rescue, you don't look at those things. You look at how each individual cat is and you honor it in the way that you treat it medically, in the way that you allow it to have its space, or if it wants to be with you. Uh, I know everybody that adopts thinks that they want an in-your-face cat, so they love all those little babies that have been bottle fed because they're human contact all the time, but they'll get home and two or three days later call and say, oh my gosh, I can't sleep, what do I do? So, you know. What do you do when a cat's up all night and we're trying to sleep? Well, you find another room for it. <laughs> That's about all you can do, uh -huh. so. Yeah, I mean, our connection of cats are amazing and it goes back to what the ancient Egyptians yes. found the cats to be just something very mystical and magical. Yes. yes. Um, what, what do you attribute to it? It's more than just going and hunting rodents. Well, I, I think uh, the history of cats has changed over the years uh, and I'm a little stunned by some of it. I mean, the, the Egyptians worshipped them as gods because they saved the grain harvest. And then we had a period in history where they were persecuted as with witches and burned the at the ages, stake. Yeah. And we have other countries where they are treated as, as vermin, where they're burned, they're drowned, they're thrown away. I think that the status of uh, cats and all animal, or cats and dogs especially, in our lives has uh, reached a new level because there are many people like myself that have chosen not to have children. So the animals become like our children. They take care of that nurturing, caring side of us. So I hope that their position in our lives continues to elevate. You are really the cat woman, a, a, a true superhero. And the book is called Cat Tales, and you can get it through your bookstore and online? I, yes, through my website, uh, www.rescuecats.org. It's best to order it from me. 100% uh, of the proceeds go to Rescue Cats. Thank you so much, Thank Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors, and you're watching Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your entertainment, The Pet Psychic, as we enter the Animal Zone.
Well, welcome to our home. Wendy and I are so thrilled to have Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic here today, to read what Mikey is thinking. Now, some people might think a pit bull doesn't think much at all, but I have a hunch he's got a lot to tell us. So, Laura, it's over to you. Okay. Well, Mikey, what do you want to say? You're happy everyone's here to talk with you? You're really glad that you're getting your day on camera? You've been thinking about this moment? And what have you been thinking about it? You've been thinking about what to say? That's good. So what have you thought about? Everybody needs to have a dog? I agree. People should know that dogs like you are not scary. People see you and all of a sudden they're scared. And sometimes you're more scared than they are. You're like, why are you scared of me? I'm scared of you. Sometimes people bend over like they're gonna attack you, but really they're just saying hi. That's true, right? It's like, that's what happens is sometimes bend with people bend with their torso, huh? And in doggy language, that's kind of scary. You don't get above each other unless you're being scary to each other or more dominant. Your mom and dad couldn't have a better dog. <laughs> they really treat you well. Every day they just cuddle with you? Oh, how nice. You think the love that you guys have with each other, everyone should have with their pet? They just respect you so much? In what ways? How do they respect you? They're always like, hi, Mikey, when they come in the house. And they're like, see you later, Mikey, when they leave. The cat and I are becoming besties. Are they? Great, yeah. Mm, good. Does he think about the old cat that we lost? Yeah, what do you think about your old, your friend that passed away? You think he's a spirit in the house? He's always a spirit in the house? Where do you see him? You see him? He sleeps with mom a lot. Sometimes you see him meow for food. You still miss him a lot. And mom does too. And dad's like cats come and go and it's sad. Yeah. He says when he's a spirit, you're gonna bring so much joy that everyone's gonna laugh. Sometimes my old friend does that. Do you feel him sometimes? And sometimes. then like smile yeah. and yeah. Sometimes. Aw, that's cute. How many animals can you fit on this property? <laughs> a lot, why? <laughs> you were wanting to get another animal, really? Like what kind of other animal do you want to get? Sometimes you want a puppy. Why, why do you want a puppy? Because I'm still pretty spry and I want to train it right. How's his health? Yeah, how do you been feeling? Like, how do you feel in your body? You try not to think about getting old? Sometimes I'm running and my legs collapse and I'm like, darn. Mm -hmm. That could be from your injury though, right? Sometimes you're like going down a step and you trip. I don't see depth as well. Well, he ran into the door he the ran other into night. Door, yeah, just the other night. He he was barreling down the hallway and ran oh. into the kitchen door and he hurt himself. Oh, I think sometimes he doesn't, I mean, he still sees, but it, I don't think it's perfect anymore. Yeah, mm. sometimes we think he's a pit bull in a china shop. You know? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> he's kind of a big boy. <laughs> Mikey, are you ever in pain? You felt pain a lot in your life. You don't want to talk about pain because then it makes it worse. But in this situation, it's a very good positive thinker. Mikey is being, right? And he thinks like, let's not concentrate on the pain and then maybe the pain will go away. Like think of the good times. But Mikey, your people want to know so that they can help you. Cause maybe they can do things to make the pain less. Sometimes my back hurts, sometimes my hips hurt, sometimes my knees hurt, sometimes my shoulders hurt. Hmm. Yeah. But I like to eat. <laughs> no does. doubt about that. <laughs> he loves to eat. You have advice for people? When you have pain, think to yourself, I'm strong, and then you'll get over it. I think that is a cool way to think. Laura, that was really insightful. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and your communication with Mikey. Mikey and I are gonna go get a snack, and then we'll be back here on Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. 
Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. And here we are with Dr. Annie O'Donnell from the Lacumbra Animal Hospital. And Dr. Annie, so nice of you to have us here today. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. You know, yeah, I think about vets, and you guys are just amazing with what you can do with all the different species you deal with. But when it comes to adopting an animal, be it a cat or a dog or a bunny, which of those are the most uh, subject to health issues? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think it depends a lot on the individual. Um, certainly there are dogs, cats who are just unfortunate and are more likely just to get sick um, just by chance. Similar to people, some people that we know are just sicker all the time and others seem to be a little bit more stronger and don't have so much sickness. So. You know, it is hard to say, but I would say in general, I do see more dogs than I do cats, um, possibly because dogs are out and about. They're at the beach, they're doing agility courses, they're athletic, um, they possibly are eating things that they're not supposed to. Um, that I think I, I would say that more likely um, dogs. Eating things like they're not supposed to is just like me when I go by hot fudge sundaes. What about uh, certain breeds? Are there certain breeds that are more subject to illnesses than others within the dog world? That's a good question. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that no one breed is sicker than the, the other. Definitely smaller dogs in general live longer lives than the large breed dogs. But you know, each one can have ear infections, they can have skin issues, um, they can have heart problems. So yeah. I don't... So maybe the solution is whatever dog you get, does health insurance help? pet health insurance? It definitely does. So um, a lot of people when there is a huge medical expense um, insurance does come into play and when you don't have to worry so much about finances it's great in the sense that I can offer the best medicine for these patients and not have to worry so much am I are we dipping too much into savings and so forth you know definitely there's different plans for insurance companies um, definitely you know try to find a plan that's right for for your lifestyle of course but yeah overall and in pet insurance is great now when you look at uh, foods I mean I go down the aisle and some of these uh, pet stores and there's so many different kinds of food and now they're getting organic and they're getting like imported from another place and it's hard to choose. Is there a specific kind of food that is best for for pets and, and how do you choose? Yeah, I don't think there's one particular food that's the best food out there. But some things to look for is, you know, has it met the AFCO or basically a regulating agency's standards as far as it being nutritionally complete and balanced? Um, do they do clinical trials with their food? Do they have a veterinary specialist on their board? Some things I would avoid, though, are all life stages food because it's not appropriate for an old dog to be getting a puppy food. Um, furthermore, grain-free food is also also a very um, popular trend. You know, the FDA did put out a warning that actually with grain-free food, there can be a deficiency in some of the taurine, which is an amino acid, and that can actually increase the chances of a heart disease. Um, yeah, so. I know there was some fear about Chinese products because they were using maybe sub you know, below uh, yeah. regulation type quality is that is that still the case so maybe you know if if the food companies you know if they actually make the food in their center then there's more oversight and you know that's another thing that you can maybe look up on their website or you know call customer care and you know where do they make their food where do their ingredients come from and make the best decision that way now, I know that you're saying that we got to be careful with the kind of food and beverage we give our dogs. Mm -hmm. What about dogs that drink out of the toilet bowl? And you still have a bowl of water. I mean, why do they do that? Yeah, um, oh gosh, the fresh water, we hope, you know, hopefully we're, we're flushing on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> it's always confusing to me, I don't know. <clears throat> now, thinking about cats for a moment, clearly male tomcats spray. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had one and boy, it was aromatic for many years. Why is it that they spray? Are they marking territory or is there more than that? Yeah, they're marking territory. You know, certainly the, the cats that are not neutered are more likely to spray. Um, and so, yeah, they're just marking their territory. And someone told me that they also kind of spread the word to female kitties that, hey, 
Uh, I, I have a good diet. Come and get, come and come and join me. I'm around. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I notice like when I talk to the dog for a walk, he's sniffing every few feet along our walk. Uh, <laughs> is, is that because he's learning stuff about the other dogs in the neighborhood? What, 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 what do they pick up from their sense of smell? Yeah, I think a variety of things. Definitely different dogs in the neighborhood, wildlife that they might be interested in chasing, um, maybe little food crumbs here and there. There's a lot of things that they can sniff. Even your your footprints too. Um, you know where where you're where you're walking. You know they can pick up on where you have been and 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 maybe trying to sniff. It, it's kind of like the Facebook for dogs. They can learn everything that's going on in the neighborhood. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down, I don't know. Now, one thing we can't give to dogs is during the various holidays are things like chocolates, right? Chocolate is bad. Chocolate is bad. Um, other things that are bad for dogs are um, grapes, raisins, onions, garlic. These are definitely some things that you want to avoid. Okay, so when you give your dog his birthday cake, Make it an, a vanilla cake. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carrot cake is probably okay. Yeah. With no raisins. No, no raisins. Right. No, no right. raisins. No macadamia nuts. Well, Dr. Annie, thank you so much for all that great information, and uh, I hope you'll come back on the show very soon. Most definitely. Thank and you. We'll be back uh, right after these words, right here on Animal Zone. I'm Karen Atlas from Atlas Rehabilitation for Canines, and you're watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today, and don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. here with Tamar Geller, the author of some New York Times best-selling books on dog behavior and how you can train not only the dog, but more importantly, the person, the, the parent of the dog. And ourselves. Yes. <laughs> One of your books, which I read about 13 years ago, yes. it's called The Love Dog. Yes. And it's set a whole new understanding about how to train dogs without punishment. That method about play training dogs was really amazing and I was blessed that my beloved client, Oprah, launched it for me. So, because it worked with her dogs and she wanted the world to know that it was life-changing. But what happens when we were 13 years ago, hopefully we get better with age, like wine, yes. right? Yep. You know, so now what I'm doing is what I call mindful dog training, where mindfulness is not only using play and fun, but actually getting the dog to think and come up with the answer, meaning I'm against obedience. Really? I'm not going to give a dog command. I'm not going to teach them how to obey a command. I would look and I will create the environment the way you do with children, where they can come up with the best answer. Well, how do you, how do you tell a dog without telling the dog to sit? So dogs ultimately at one point will sit naturally particularly if they think that you have a treat or something, at one point, the natural impulses will go into, let me just sit and wait. The moment they do it, even at eight weeks, I'm right there and I'm saying, sit. What I'm not saying is, good boy. Because good boy is too generic when you teach anyone a new language. May it be a dog or a child. Remember, I'm a foreigner. I had to learn this language. I know how difficult it is to learn language. So I'm saying, sit, sit. When I'm saying the word and I'm saying it in a sing-songy way, it resonates with the brain. Think about jingles and commercials, music. Think how we learn the ABC, A, B, C, D. Everything is with music. So saying the word repeatedly, and I'm giving an unbelievable protein-based treats. Now you talk to your dog a lot. I you do. Talk to your, you have several dogs. Yes. How many words do they actually understand? So, 60 Minutes, the TV show, did a segment on a dog that knew over a thousand words. Average dog can learn 150 words. And that's why I'm strongly against using just good dog or good boy or no. None of these give enough information. 
what it is and is in communication. For, to build a relationship, we need communication, right? Sure. The better communicating we are, we are the better re re the relationship is. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people tell the dog no, but they don't know what, the dog, what for the dog to do instead. They want a dog to figure it out, what to do instead. So if I don't want a dog to bite me, to nip at me, I'm going to say, ouch, kisses, kisses. And before, I'll teach a dog how to kiss me by putting coconut oil on my hand, by putting something yummy and teach the dog to kiss me. And then when he's nipping, I'm going to say, ouch, that communicate emotionally, I don't like it. And then immediately, kisses, kisses, we're already taught what kisses is so the dog can do that. So what it is, is I'm asking not only the dogs to be mindful, but for the people to be mindful, how do we communicate? Are we as good communicators as we think, or we just say, it's not up to me to be a good communicator. The dog needs to be obedient. You, have, you can do that, but chances are, your dog will not be your raving fan. Your dog would not want to be as connected to you as you probably want. That's why you got a dog to begin with. Do you think this works with other species? Do we, I mean, with cats or horses, donkeys? I know that it works with any animal that is a social animal. Because all social animals have the deep, deep need to connect. Think about that prison system. What is the worst punishment you can give? Solitary. Solitary confinement. Yeah. That's exactly right. So social animals, yes. I, I love cats, but I don't. I have not spent time studying them. So I don't know how it works if, if solitary or shunning them is punishment. But for a, a social animal, since they want to connect, I know it works with children. I know it works with marriages. Yes. You know, I mean, I follow everything that I do with the brain researcher, Dr. Daniel Amen, or Dr. John Gutman from University of Seattle, who is the expert on relationships. It's all the same. Dr. John Gutman said something very interesting. For the relationship to survive, for every Tiny even word of criticism, you have to have five positive, genuine compliments. For the relationship to thrive, for everyone, you have to have 20. And I apply it with dogs. That's why I constantly talk to my dogs, because I constantly want to tell them, I got you, and I'm happy. Well, I'm impressed by you. And I feel grateful that we've got Tamar here on Animal Zone. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Thank Appreciate you it. for having me. I mean, awesome. <laughs> awesome. We'll be back here on Animal Zone. for watching Animal Zone. When it comes to animal rescue, you are the heroes that make all the difference. To find out how you can safely and simply adopt an animal, please visit animalzone.org. See you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. For all time, so glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be, oh, canine of mine Friend for all 
all time I'm so glad you're my best friend